Why does our body turn excess vitamin C into oxalate? Is excess vitamin C more harmful than oxalate? Mm, not really. Oxalate is oxalate. Just simple as that. It just does. You know, when it can't use it, 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 it excretes it too much. Look, all animals that produce vitamin C endogenously cannot produce any, do not use uric acid um, as an antioxidant and do not have any LPLA. So if you know about um, the lipoproteins, the LP, little a in brackets, little a, which has that little tail that can stitch up. And, you know, so if you've got a, let's say, an endothelial damage, you can go there, stitch it all up, that's, and then slowly over the atheroma there, calcium, bring, calcium will come in and it'll all be, you know, stitched together and then it will slowly harden and heal behind and then it will get cleaned up. That's the process that should happen. Well, to fix up that, that, that collagen damage and to reduce the oxidation, some animals will use the basically the vitamin C. Other animals will use LP little a to stitch it all up and uric acid to lower the actual the um the inflammation inflammation the you know use it as an antioxidant. That's its purpose. So it plays the role. And so we lost the ability because we didn't need it. And the main purpose now for vitamin C is basically to take proline and lysine, put a hydroxyl group and, you know, hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine is what is used for collagen. So if you eat hydroxyproline, hydroxylysine from animal foods because you're eating a lot of protein and stuff like that, the requirements for vitamin C go dramatically down. Got it? Simple as that. They go dramatically down to very little. And so if you consume, like supplement vitamin C, most of that will turn into oxalate because the body doesn't need it. The other thing that is important is when you're on a low-carb diet, keto diet or carnivore diet, what happens is this is really important. We've got glute receptors. Most people know about the GLUT4 receptor. Okay, so the GLUT4 receptor requires insulin to get glucose into the cell. Okay, so the GLUT, so when insulin comes out because of high, because of sensing of more glucose in the system, in the bloodstream, then what happens is insulin is excreted, it goes to the cell, it hits on a receptor site and says, open up GLUT4 and take in some glucose for energy. Let's get it out of the bloodstream. So that's what it does. But it GLUT4 also is used by vitamin C. Got it? That is why on a carbohydrate diet, you need more vitamin C to try and force it through. It's sort of an osmotic pressure because, let's put it this way, ions moving in and out and stuff molecules moving in and out of cells between the intra and extracellular fluid, they there is an osmotic pressure differential that is created that pushes forces one through those channels. Got it? So taurine is a big regulator of those channels and can regulate the sort of the, the and also affect the type of ions that are moving back and forth through to maintain electron neutrality between the inter and extra cellular fluids and along the membrane that's much sorry it's maybe going a bit too far in my explanation but vitamin c can get in from the glute 4 receptor if it's not being used so let's say you're in a low carbohydrate state and all that you can take in very small amounts of vitamin c very easily because the GLUT4 receptor, there's no glucose going in. And you'll say, well, don't you have a basal level of glucose in the bloodstream, even with gluconeogenesis? Yes, you do. But it's usually spared. That's why it doesn't go through GLUT4 at all, because it needs insulin to go through there. So only vitamin C can go through there. Unimpeded, that's why your requirement drops dramatically. You're not competing with a lot of glucose, and that's the problem. And that's why diabetics end up getting scurvy, 
not because of lack of vitamin C even when they supplement them. It's because the competition at the GLUT4 receptor and the Randall cycle act activation, which is inhibiting the, you know, the, the GLUT4 receptor gets down regulated because there's just too much energy in the system. And then you've even got bigger problems in getting um, vitamin C inside the cell. But that's in a deranged state. You can't use that as an example. What medical docs say, oh, look, you know, and I go, well, you know, that's a diabetic. What the, what the effing are you talking about, you moron? Don't you understand physiology the way it works? And the other thing that they won't tell you because they're completely ignorant is when you're at a basal level, you get gluconeogenesis, you increase your glucose, which provides some or exercise on a low carbohydrate diet. Your blood sugar goes up slightly and then comes down. Where does it go? If the brain isn't uptaking it or the red blood cells up aren't taking it and there's actually a peripheral resistance in taking it up from the GLUT4 receptors because um, insulin is slightly down, where is it going to go? There's a GLUT1 receptor and that can take any excess sugar in a low insulin state when the sugar is at a, a basal level so it's not forcing high excretions of insulin signaling and it will take it through the GLUT1 receptor, leaving alone the GLUT4 for the vitamin C. You've just learned something about physiology, how it works. There you go, without having to go to school. 